Uh, so can uh, people don't know, uh, tell us uh, kind of just briefly who you are, what Totem is, what you guys are doing, how long you've been doing it. Yeah, hundred percent. So Totem, Totem dot Earth, uh, New Earth Systems. It's all a uh, blockchain ecosystem, kind of like blockchain development company, just providing different Web3 gateways and entrances and, and use cases for, you know, different artists, for anybody really to understand more as to like how they can take their life and, and their projects and their businesses, their art, whatever it may be, and, and integrate it into this new space. And as we believe, you know, blockchain is very much like this new beautiful system for for humans to self-organize and create, uh, you know, an autonomous categorization and organization of, of the way we move money or move energy or uh, move, um, yeah, just our, our flow. It's really meant for everybody. So that's, that's what we do. So is Totem like... Um an incubator for projects is it like a platform is it um an nft project like what is the uh what is like the core help, <laughs> help me understand here yeah yeah so it's, it's a beautiful project it looks great <laughs> thank you yeah we've been having a lot of fun we, we've been we've been building tech for a couple of years now um we were building a web2 platform before and as COVID kind of hit and as the world kind of reevaluated the way that we go about doing our things, we realized that tokenization and, you know, this DAO concept was going to be exactly what we wanted to do. So that's when this ecosystem theory kind of came together as my partners and I took all of our previous businesses and ventures and, and threw them in the pot together. It, it was natural that something um, was going to need to come out of it. That was a new form, a new system. And, and so blockchain, you know, DAO, a lot of these types of theories and concepts came together. And, and so this is our approach to it. So, you know, more than anything, we're a collective of artists and creators and, and, and um, you know, builders and dreamers. Um, but what it really comes down to is, uh, yeah, it, it's a form of incubation, we have all of our flagship projects um, with the way that we show our creativity, our systems. And so as, as we partner with people or as we generate our own concepts, we put them into the ecosystem and make sure that they all connect in some way or other. And so currently our, our project we just dropped is called Zoids, which is the entrance, the very, very beginning project to allowing people to hold their own keys but these keys essentially allow you to access Totem OS, and that's going to be our flagship platform project um, where everybody can come in and use all kinds of different tools. So can you talk about Zoids? You said Zoids was the NFT, and then you kind of have branches that are, are stemming out of Totem. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So yeah, so... Talk about the NFTs and then talk about how that kind of leads up to the different branches. Yeah, so Zoids is the project that we just dropped in the last, whatever, 10 days. Um, sold out before public could even access it. And so that was really fun. So you just the whitelist first. And yeah. I kind of wanted to talk about, you could talk about it after, but how you, uh, you made that kind of community in, in Discord and, and that process as well. So. Yeah, 100%. So really, you know, Zoids goes back to the beginning of this year as we were watching all the all the NFT projects were dropping left and right and people were making all this money and people were coming up with generative ideas and the apes and the cool cats and all of them. Um, and so we kind of sat and watched a bunch of our friends, you know, doing their drops and artifact studios and and we wanted to really pull back and go to the basics of what an NFT was and the way that everyone was using them. And so really what it came down to was a is form of a key or a form of an identity. Everyone's changing their profile pictures. Everyone's coming together as a community to be like, yo, what's up? We're 10,000 apes. Yo, what's up? We're 10,000 cool cats, you know? And so observing these keys, these entrance points, these identities and the way that they interacted with each other inside of a community was really interesting. 
so we took it a step further and went deep into what makes our identities as humans. Um, the genetics, the actual DNA that allows each of us to have our identity and allows each of us to, you know, connect to the people around us, our families, our friends. And so with that, we, we connected um, the different genders, the different genetics that tie to all 13 different planets. And uh, we created some lore and we created some hype. We built some really beautiful websites and our community just kind of like naturally stemmed from the art and the depth and, and the, the amount of connectivity to our own selves that this project was creating. And so within a couple of weeks, as soon as we push publish on the website, it was like, boom, like 10,000 people hopped in the discord strictly just word of mouth um, and a couple other, you know, marketing tactics, but mostly just, just word of mouth and, and creating a really beautiful system. And we spent a lot of time in discord during those two weeks, just setting up the frame and, and meeting all the right people and kind of like building a, an organic community. And we're like, yo, can you help us with this? Can you help us with this? And then, all of a sudden, you know, our head of community, Joshua, comes in, sets up the whole like badge system and it all just kind of like naturally and quickly unfolded. But the reason why I think it was so successful was because it's truly based on the depth that we we are and we have as humans ourselves. And so this identity was, you know, a, a beautiful, fun manifestation as to like what we do <laughs> as humans. So you were talking about the projects you were done before. Um, talk about those projects, kind of. You said, or that they were done individually, and I'm sure that that had to had been an assistance to how you guys uh, you, you kind of granularly thought about kind of the the marketing of of the Zoids first and the OS, but kind of your 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 timeline of of previous ventures that helped with with as as you're building this. Yeah, so, you know, when it comes down to it, Daniel and I have been working together for a couple of years now, and we really, our first project together was a community project. We we connected with some different influential people on Instagram and created a space um, for their, you know, their community to come together in a, in a special jungle village treehouse place in the, in the Dominican Republic. And so we did this kind of like, um, initial marketing launch and had whatever, a couple thousand applications, essentially. I mean, this is 2018 and we created like a whitelist, a web two whitelist, if you will. And we went through and hand selected every single person that could come on that trip. And we were very, we curated it in a way that, you know, felt good and, and looked at all the different people. And we kind of like tried to create a balance of, okay, yeah, you come on the trip. Let's all connect. Like, yes, yes, yes. You know, maybe not over there, but like maybe over here. And so that was, that was kind of our first success together was building like a, a quick, not a makeshift community, but just like a, a I don't know, a, a community just came together and, and we all had like one of the most amazing weeks of our lives. And then that just stemmed out from there. We, we kept working and kept pushing and all of a sudden it all became about community over and over and over again and building group chats and, you know, using different like organic marketing technique techniques that allowed uh, people to ultimately come together and have something to discuss and have something to, to do. And as, as you know, the world kind of shut down for a second, we walked in here in Hawaii and we built a physical version of that where there was about 25 of us and we were just like, yo, like dream incubator spot to like come together and just build beautiful projects and products that, you know, resonated with us and products that we wanted that maybe weren't existing in the world yet. And, uh, you know, whether it was technology or physical products as well. And that's kind of when Zayla came into the mix and it, it really, everything that we have really stems out from the fact that, we just love building communities and love building products and projects that resonate with humans and earth and yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is a, uh, a social operating system? Yeah. So um, the, you know, when, when we look at web two, we look at um, all the beautiful, cool platforms that allow us to connect and have allowed us to connect for so long, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, wherever it is, basically you, create an input and other people observe that and comment on it and connect with it. And then 
you know, that's the social interaction of media and within the social framework. And so as Web3 comes in and everyone's allowed to own the different building blocks of this social interaction, this social connection, this is where I kind of like describe this social sandbox where everyone can become a developer nowadays. Um, you don't have to know that, that how to code that much to understand like a feature that may, you know, you may like to request or you don't have to know too much about programming the way that you might have had to know about programming during the web one phase. Um, so now, you know, with no code tools or just understanding like social interaction uh, metrics, um, people can kind of come together and build out this sandbox of a, to build this new internet, this new operating system um, that's going to allow people to connect and, and create in, in a way that maybe is somewhere in between web one and web two, where it's less about like flashy images and likes and comments and, and these metrics. And maybe it's more about completing missions together. And um, like, what are we actually doing on earth to like go in and out of the digital world and pull into the physical world? What are we doing to plant more trees or what are we doing to collect more, um, collect artifacts that prove that we are, doing cool things on earth, maybe going on a hike or like, plant, you know, like I said, planting a tree or those are kind of like small examples of like where this social mission starts to come out. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've been just testing it so far with Discord and, and having fun with these little social missions. But I'm excited to see people come together and define like, what are the missions that we want to be doing and, and allow this, you know, canvas to be filled and, and fill a canvas together.